It's so good to be with you this morning. We've had a great and a wonderful week, and uh, I'll tell you about it here in just a moment. But it sure is good to see all of you. I'm thankful for you today. Aren't you thankful for your church family? Amen. Amen. And we're thankful for our every guest. And um, I tell you what, I am one of the most blessed pastors on the planet because I serve one of the sweetest churches on the planet. And I believe that. And uh, Shiloh, I want you to know your pastor loves you. I do. And I, 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 you were one of my greatest, very greatest blessings. And sometimes I pinch myself and go, Lord, did you really lead me to this place that I get to serve week after week? But I am thankful for you. And I want to say that to you right out of the gate. I wanted to read a card, Brother Clyde, that you handed me last week. So I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it's a card Brother Clyde handed me to our church family thanking you. And it says our special thanks to you. Kind hearts are the gardens, kind thoughts are the roots, kind words are the flowers, kind deeds are the fruits. A warm note of thanks to say people like you help make the world of brighter, brighter by the nice things you do. Clyde and Ruth Lopasser and family. So Brother Clyde, we love you and we love Miss Ruth and we're going to continue to pray for you in the days ahead. Um, and as I, I wanted to take a moment and tell you a little bit um, about this week, it's been a, I told someone this morning, I said, you know those new electric cars they have where you plug, plug them in and charge them up? I need to find a plug this morning. <laughs> it's been that kind of a week. The clock went off this morning. Now, I know you have days like this. The clock went off this morning and I said, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you either say, good morning, Lord, or good Lord, it's morning. <laughs> this morning, I was leaning toward good Lord, it's morning already. But, uh, but I tell you what, I'm thankful that I can be here, aren't you? And God is good that way. Uh, this week, I had the privilege of representing you at the Tennessee Baptist Convention. This year, it was over in Memphis. So last Sunday after church... Um, Pastor Chris Kendall from Oak City and I drove over to Memphis and we were there Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at the Tennessee Baptist Convention. There was a sweet, sweet spirit at the convention this year. We celebrated all that God has done and is doing across our state. I'm going to take one Sunday and kind of share some of that with you because I want you to know when you give your offerings and give to the cooperative program we as a church give, I want you to know the kind of ministries that is, are taking place all across the state and how God is using that. You are a part because those ministries are possible because of your prayers and because of your faithful giving. So thank you for that. It was a joy to represent you at the convention this week. And then we came home and I went right into um, Thursday preparation for Hearts on Fire. I've been with that ministry since 2000. Hearts on Fire is a student conference that meets yearly except we've not met the last couple of years because of covid uh, when we left off um, before covid we were running about 14,000 students at hearts on fire at the lacotte center in pigeon forge two years we knew we would take a hit and uh, but we were very thankful to be back this year and uh, we are back and and we're just going to take it where we are and build forward but God blessed us with 8,000 students this year. But let me tell you the best part. Uh, over 500 trusted Christ as their Savior. Over 500 kids. I have the joy and the privilege. It's my job to oversee the counseling area at Hearts on Fire. I've done that for many years. Myself and one other guy. And... So we're back there, and Friday night, as the message was given, and the invitation was given, that place was absolutely packed with kids. They were sitting on the floor with their workers, and they had their heads bowed, and they were praying to trust Christ as their Savior. There's nothing better in all the world than to see that. It's all about Jesus, church. Amen? It's all about pointing others to Him. 
So my cup is full this morning and I'm tired. And when your cup is full and I'm tired, I'm weepy. So <laughs> hang on, <laughs> hang on, okay? But we'll get through it. And thank you so much for your prayers for me. I'm, I'm not quite a hundred percent with my respiratory system yet, but I'm on my way. And so I may have to stop and take a swig of water or put a cough drop in my mouth, but just hang on. And I'm looking forward to preaching for you this morning. But I am very thankful for all that God is doing and so many reasons to praise him. If you've got your Bibles, open them up today to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Uh, we will wrap up Revelation starting next week. We'll begin the wrap up. And uh, But today... Uh, in 1 Thessalonians, we had spent some time in 1 Thessalonians on Wednesday nights recently. Uh, but 1 Thessalonians also speaks of the end days and the end times. There's one verse I want to focus in on this morning. And the verse I want to focus in on is this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. That says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. As, as you study uh, beginning in the beginning of chapter 5 in, in the book of 1 Thessalonians as a whole. Um, uh, Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica concerning the last days and the end times. And he encourages them as you read through chapter 5. He reminds them. He said, you are all sons of light and sons of the day. Uh, so he's talking about the people of God. You are all the sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. And so the Apostle Paul is reminding every believer that in these last days, we're to be sober. We're to be vigilant. And serving the Lord. Amen. And, and uh, we. Uh, that's what he is reminding us of this morning. Dr. Adrian Rogers said this. He said life is too short. Eternity is too long. Souls are too precious. The gospel is too wonderful. For us to sleep through it all. Isn't that right? Listen to that one more time. Life is too short. Eternity is too long. Souls are too precious. The gospel is too wonderful for us to sleep through it all. And so Paul writes the church at Thessalonica and he encourages them to be sober and vigilant. In verse 8, he says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. And then as he Wraps the letter up. He comes uh, to verse 17. We're going to skip over some things this morning. But in verse 16. He says rejoice always. Pray. Without ceasing. In other words. Live, um, live every day. In an attitude in a heart. Lifting your prayers to the Lord. About everything. Verse 18. In everything. Here's our key verse this morning. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus for you. Um, you know, uh, an unbelieving world, when they see a person who is joyful, when they see a person who is thankful and has a heart full of gratitude, when they see a person who is rejoicing, that's very different than the status quo. Amen. And they are able to recognize that there's something different about us. And we have the opportunity and the privilege of sharing the Lord Jesus with them and how he's changed our lives. And so we should live in an attitude of thanks. Listen, don't be a grumbly Christian. Don't be one of those who profess Christ and you walk around with your chin hanging on the dragon on the ground. You look so sad all the time. But we have, even when we walk through difficult things, we have reason to be thankful and to rejoice. Do you believe it? I do. Uh, as I was thinking about bringing this message God brought a very dear friend of mine to my heart. And uh, she recently, you were praying for uh, Miss Wanda, who recently lost her husband to um, Alzheimer's. And it was a long and hard journey for them. And now her daughter 
is having a, a very bad battle with cancer. And it's not looking too good. We're still praying for miracles. But all of this has transpired this year in their lives. And every, almost every day, Miss Wanda posts something that is an encouragement to others. Because see, even when we walk through difficult things, we can find reasons to be thankful and to rejoice, church. Do you believe that? I do. And so I want to talk to you this morning a little bit about giving thanks in all circumstances. Giving thanks in all circumstances, no matter what it is. I love how the Amplified Bible um, interprets verse 18. It says, in every situation, in every situation, and then it expands on that a little bit. It says, no matter what the circumstances, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And see the difference there. The reason we can do that is because of Christ Jesus. And because of the difference he makes in our lives. Um, my grandmother had a friend. And back in the early 80s, I had heard so much about this friend. My grandmama would... My grandmama was one of those ladies who liked to talk on the phone. I know none of you like to talk on the phone. But she loved nothing better than to get on the phone with her friends. And she would do that at night. There was one friend named Miss Pearl. And I'd heard so much about Miss Pearl. And I'd never met her. And uh, one day, my grandmama said, listen, we want, I want you to drive me over. And we're going to go visit Miss Pearl. And we got to Miss Pearl's house and she was the most precious lady you've ever met. Snow white hair. Just a, when you met her, she just immediately smiled. And she was one of those people that just made you a part of her family immediately. She loved you immediately. But Miss Pearl was a character. Back in the day, she worked for the, um, she worked for the phone company, the Pond Branch Phone Company, when they had an operator that still did the switches. All of our young people going, I have no idea what you're talking about, Pastor. <laughs> but a call would come in and Miss Pearl would answer. And then they would tell her who they wanted to be connected to. And she would pull the cord out and put it in the right place. And I'm not too sure Miss Pearl didn't listen in on some of those conversations <laughs> that were taking place. Because she had stories. She had stories to tell. Something else interesting about Miss Pearl. She and her husband over the years... I learned that they had fostered over a hundred children in their home over the years. And Grandma and I, we went in and sat down in her living room. And every bookshelf, every end table, every, the coffee table, the window sills, everything had little knickknacks and little, little trinkets of all kinds of things just sitting around everywhere. And I said, Miss Pearl, I said... And pictures, pictures of children. I said, Miss Pearl, tell me of what all this is. And she said, well, son, well, let me tell you. She said, my husband and I fostered over 100 children in our life. And these are little gifts that those children gave me all through the years. And she was so proud of all those things. And she was telling me about every picture and every child. She remembered their names and remembered all the details about their lives and and then I noticed on the end table sitting next to sitting next to me was a lamp. And I can't even hardly describe this lamp to you. It was a great big blob of white plaster. All out of shape, all contorted and twisted. And it had little trinkets stuck in that plaster. Fake jewels. Pieces of jewelry. All kind of stuff just stuck in that plaster all over and they had made a lamp out of it and I said Miss Pearl I said you got to tell me about this lamp and she said why why yes so that's the way she talked she just why yes honey let me tell you about that lamp and she said there was one time in our home we were fostering four different children at one time and she said they got together and for Mother's Day they made me this lamp and she just was going on. She said, 
She said, they worked so hard. And she said, I'm just so proud of that lamp. Isn't it the ugliest thing you ever saw? <laughs> but that lamp was on that table and it was on full display for everyone to see. I so enjoyed our visit with Miss Pearl that day. That lamp was a mess to look at. But when you looked at it, you also saw the beautiful pieces of broken glass, of old pieces of costume jewelry, bottle caps, rocks, fake jewels. And you saw the love that went into it. And it was a thing of beauty. Well, dear church, sometimes our lives can seem like a mess. Sometimes it is a mess. Trouble troubles us all. Would you agree with that? But if we will look in the middle of all our trials and hardships, there are signs of God's blessings all around us. And most of all, his love. I believe that. Some of you are walking through very difficult and hard things. And you may look and your life looks like a mess. But if you will look hard enough, dear child of God, you will find God's blessing. You will find that he is with you. You will find that he is faithful. And, and he shows you in a million ways of his love and his care for you. If we will but look. How can we in everything give thanks? How can we do that? When life is hard. Number one. I think we receive every day as a gift. And we look for our blessings. Every day. You've heard me say it before. Um, when I'm dead and gone. When I leave Shiloh. Whenever the Lord says. Pastor that's enough. I hope you remember. That your pastor always reminded you. That every day is a gift. Today wasn't an accident for you. It was planned. Amen. And there's a God in heaven who loves you. And if you will look, you will find his blessings. Psalm 118 and verse 24 reminds us that this is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. I love that verse because it reminds us that every single day, every single day is a gift. And we are to rejoice and be glad in it, even on our hard days. And I think that's something we learn as we grow older and as we grow in our faith, um, you know, as we're, we're young in our faith, when we have a difficult day and a hard day, we tend to lean toward complaining. And that's just human nature. That's what we do. And sometimes even as we mature in Christ, we kind of revert back to that. And we have to remind ourselves that the Lord is with us and we can rejoice. And I believe rejoicing in the Lord is a choice first and foremost. Amen. But I want to tell you what, when you will see, there will be a shift in your heart and a shift in your spirit. When you catch yourself and you realize, you know what, I'm tending to, I'm tending to go into the direction of complaining and worrying and, and filling my heart with things that are causing me to be anxious. I need to come over here and I, I need to lean toward, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you that you're with me. Thank you that Jesus died on the cross for me. Lord, thank you. For my salvation. We have so much to be thankful for. You will find your heart becoming lighter. As you begin to focus on rejoicing in the Lord. And being glad in him. Psalm 139. And verse 16 reminds us. All the days for me. Listen at that. All the days for me were written in your book. Before one of them came to be. Before one day came to be. You know, all of my joyful days, they were there. All of your joyful days. The day your children were born, were written in that book. The day you were saved, it was all there. The day as a child I lost my dad, it was there. All those days. Were ordained for me before one of them came to be. But I also love what it says over in Jeremiah. Jeremiah prophesied and he said. For I, I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. 
plans to give you hope in a future. And yes, that was written for the nation of Israel. But yes, it is applicable to every child of God. And it says, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So throughout scripture, there is a theme. There's a message that rises to the top. That message is that God loves us and is involved in our day to day lives. He's involved in your day to day. He woke you up this morning. That's one reason to give thanks. Aren't you glad your eyes opened up this morning? Even though I woke up this morning and I said, good Lord, it's morning. I knew the Lord was with me. You know, I've shared with you before that um, walking in an attitude of prayer and prayer without ceasing. I believe in praying honestly. I'm just myself with the Lord. That's who he wants you to be with him. He just wants you to be yourself. And I woke up this morning and I said, whew. Lord, it's been a long week. You're going to have to help me on this one. But you know what he always does? And so we need to learn to look for our blessings and the things we have to be thankful for and to thank him for his pres presence. Sometimes, my friends, God will leave little. Re well, let me back up a minute. Um, here this last several weeks when I go to my office after church I find little things on my desk little thank you notes and cards that the children have made and I love each and every one of them and they're little reminders they're little reminders to me that they are praying for me they're reminders to me that these children love me there's no there's no greater blessing for this pastor Miss Robin than these children in this church. Every single one of them. Are a blessing. And I'm thankful to them. And they'll leave me little reminders. On my desk. And it's such a blessing to me. But you think about the ways God leaves us. Little reminders every day. Even on our difficult days. That he's with us. And he loves us. Difficult days come. They do. I walked through some difficult days this year and I'm still walking through some with my sister. I don't know where that's going to go. I don't know what the challenge of tomorrow morning's going to bring. Some of you are walking through things. You may go to the doctor and you've gotten a diagnosis of cancer. Some of you are walking through all kinds of things. Difficult days come, but there are always blessings as well. How many of you know that? God leaves us reminders all around. Have you seen them? The break of a new day, a sunrise. What a blessing. Another day. A gift of a new day. A lot of times in the morning, I'll get up and I'll make sure no one's around because I hadn't combed my, what little hair I have yet. And it's sticking straight up. But I'll walk out on the carport because I want to see this new day that God has sent. I love to see the sunrise. I love to see the sky turn different colors and feel the this morning it was cold and it was brisk outside. And I love it. And I thought, Lord, this is going to be a good day. This is the day you have made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. But God sends a sunrise. He sends beautiful sunsets. He shows us all days, all, all day long. Here this fall, we've had the beauty of the changing season and the leaves. The ability to see those colors. We've got eyes to see the mountains. Eyes to see the beauty of God's creation. The ability to smell your favorite cookies baking in the oven. The ability to hear a loved one speak to you or hear the laughter when your family gets together. Blessings. Every single day God blesses us with his goodness and I am thankful to him sometimes all of those blessings come in the midst of heart the hardships of life the trials the problems the suffering the heartache
the grief, the loneliness, the persecution, the sickness, all are a part of our lives at different times. We never know what a day will bring. But if you look, if you'll listen, if you'll stop and be quiet for, for just a moment, you will realize that God is there. He really is. Psalm 4610, be still and know when you find your heart becoming anxious, be still and know that he is God. Amen. So remember that every day is a gift and to look for your blessing. Secondly, remember that your relationship with the Lord is your greatest blessing. How many of you remember the day you were saved? Amen. What a wonderful day. You know, the Apostle Paul said this in Philippians chapter one. <coughs> he said, for to me to live as Christ and to die as gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain. And I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. He said in Philippians 3, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I consider everything else a loss to the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus. When you have Jesus, you have everything. You really do. You really do. There was one Thanksgiving and there were these two little girls and they were misbehaving. And their father... He had given them one warning, two warnings, and they still didn't listen. And he finally said, girls, go to your room. You're dismissed from Thanksgiving dinner. The girls went dejected and sad to their rooms. And a few moments later, they heard their mother calling, girls, come on down. It's time to eat. And they were a little bit baffled. Well, they came on down. And they sheepishly walked into the dinner table and they sat down and, and then they noticed something. Dad was not there. So they asked their mother, Mom, where's Dad? And Mom said, Dad went to his room. But why, Mom? Because Dad loves you so much. He couldn't change his standard. But he didn't want you to, de he didn't want it to deny you dinner. So Dad said he would go and pay the price so that you could come and eat the meal. So while you enjoy the meal, remember that your dad has picked up the tab and he's taking your punishment and has paid the penalty. Brothers and sisters, when you forget to say thanks for everything else, don't forget to say thanks to Jesus because he paid the penalty for us. Amen. So that we could have life. And life eternal. Do you know that when we're saved. What a precious gift that is. Um, some people. Dr. Adrian Rogers writes this. He said some people get confused. When salvation happens. But the work of salvation. Can be explained simply by using. Three verb tenses. In the English language. The moment you repent and believe upon Jesus Christ. As your Lord and Savior. You are saved from the penalty of sin. After that, you enter a process of sanctification where you are being saved from the power of sin. And when you get to heaven, you will be saved from the presence of sin. Isn't that beautiful? That day as a nine-year-old boy, when I trusted Christ as my Savior, I was saved from the penalty of sin. And now the Lord is working on me every day. I'm not finished yet. In case y'all haven't noticed. I'm not a perfect man. I still struggle. I still mess up. But God is at work faithfully in me. Making me more and more like Christ. Every day. Helping me to grow. 
But one day, when I get to heaven, I'll be free even from the presence of sin. Wow. So when you enter into that saving relationship with Jesus Christ, you are justified immediately in your spirit. You are sanctified progressively in your soul. And you will be glorified ultimately in your body. So praise God for our salvation. Aren't you thankful? That's what Jesus has done for you. And that's what Jesus has done for me. So remember that your relationship with the Lord is your greatest blessing. And then finally, thanking that he is with you in your trials, in your pain, in your suffering, and in your difficulties. I love the story in Acts where Paul and Silas were in prison and they had been doing the Lord's work. They had been preaching the gospel. And because of that, because they uh, cast a demon out of a young girl who was following, following them around, they were taken in front of the town magistrates. They were beaten with rods, the scripture said. They were beaten. I've never been beaten with a rod. Have you been beaten with a rod? I'm not going to sign up today. But they were beaten with rods and then they were put into the inner prison. And their feet were put in stocks. If you can imagine being totally constrained like that. After they had been beaten. After they were bleeding. After they were hurting. After they had been bruised. And all of that. And the Bible says at midnight. You know what they did? They broke out in song. And they began to praise the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. For you. You may not have been beaten with rods. Or your feet in stocks. We, we all walk through different things. But for the Christian. That's the will of God for us in Christ Jesus. That we would praise him. That we would look for the blessings. And give thanks even. In our suffering, in our pain, and in our trials. God, God will never waste your difficulties. Sawyer read Romans 8.28 for us this morning. It's in my notes here again, Sawyer. I think the Lord wants us to know that today. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. Who have been called according to His purpose. Whatever you're walking through. You may not comprehend it. You may not understand it. But we know that in all things. We know. We know that in all things. All things. You know what all means? All means all. And that's all all means. We know that in all things. God works for the good of those who love him. And who have been called according to his purpose. Whatever difficulty. Whatever suffering you're walking through. God's going to use it. For some good somewhere. And you're just going to have to trust him. And hold on. And keep your eyes on Jesus. And keep singing. And keep rejoicing. For this is the will of God for you. In Christ Jesus. If we could ask Job. He would tell us that God won't waste your suffering. Job lost everything. But God was faithful to Job. Job trusted even though he struggled to understand. He said, naked I came from my mother's womb. And naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord is taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And the Bible says that the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. And he died old and full of years. I love that statement. And Job died old and full of years. You know what that means? Job lived a long time. And it wasn't easy. He had horrible, horrible, horrible days. 
But God was faithful. God's grace was there. God got him through. God continued to bless him. God continued to use him. Here I am all these years later. And I'm still talking about Job. You know who he is. And Job died old and full of years. God loves you. He's with you. And he'll never leave you. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. To bow your heads and close your eyes. <coughs> Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I don't know that I have that relationship with Jesus which you speak of. Maybe you don't have the peace and assurance that your sins are forgiven. But I'm here today to tell you that all you have to do is call upon his name and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Come into my life and save me. And he will. And so if you have never made that decision today, would you today place your faith in Christ alone to save him? In just a moment, the music's going to begin. And Benji's going to lead us in the invitational hymn. If I can pray with you to that end and help you today settle it in your heart to trust Christ as your Savior. I want to ask you to come. I'm going to be standing here at the front. I'll receive you and pray with you and encourage you. And we can settle that today. Maybe some of you here are walking through hard things. And you're about to give up on the Lord. And you're about to give up on a lot of things. Don't you dare. Talk to the Lord honestly from your heart. Begin to rejoice in Him and count your blessings. Put your eyes on Jesus. My friend, He will be faithful to you. Some of you may want to come and kneel at this altar and just spend some time with Him. Let's let the Lord work. I tell you what, those kids at Hearts on Fire this week, they let the Lord work in their hearts. Church, let's let the Lord work in our heart this morning.